Right, today I want to talk about colorizing using soft light layers. Um, one of our members, Mike Helton, was generous enough to allow me to use one of his photos for the demonstration. Um, the first thing that I always do when I'm colorizing is duplicate the background. Uh, the way I usually do it is just right click and hit duplicate layer. You could also um, grab the background layer, drag it down to the new layer icon, that makes a copy. Uh, you can also go to layer, duplicate layer, and you can also hit control J and that also makes a duplicate layer. So there's multiple ways to do that. Go back in the history here and get rid of those extras. Now, the the reason I do this is just in case I mess up. I always have the background here that if I need to borrow from it, it's here, um, and that way I don't lose my work and have to undo. Uh, I can just go back to the background and copy that part, whatever. If I mess up, um, and and this is called non-destructive um, Photoshop editing. And that way you're not messing up the original. So on this particular photo, there's a little bit of a, a gap down here where it was scanned in. So I'm just going to crop that. And it looks like over here on this side, I'm just going to crop that out real quick. Okay. And then the next thing I always do is go to Image adjustment, desaturate. You should always do that. It takes out the color that's in the photo and that way any color you lay on top won't interact with the color that's in the photo. You want uh, you don't want it to do that. And then the next thing you should do is image adjustment levels. This particular one the levels are not too bad but um, th this left hand slider are your shadows and you want that to be right where the histogram begins to go up. And then on this end are your highlights. And you want that slider to be right where the histogram comes back down to the line. This particular photo is a little bit blown out here and on his cheek. So I'm going to adjust the midtones and try to bring some color back into that, some, some shadow. Um, click OK. And because of that uh, blown out problem, I'm also going to go into Image, Adjustment, Shadows and Highlights. I'm going to turn the shadows all the way down to zero. And I'm going to bring the highlights up. And that darkens some of those blown out areas. Um, now, that did also really darken the shadows, and if you want to lighten those, then you can move this slider back up once you have your highlights turned down. So I'm going to click OK on that. And now I am ready to colorize. Now, the shadows and highlights did cause some speckling here. Um, and there's some dots here in his hair. For right now, I'm going to focus on these dots in his hair and try to get rid of those. Um, so I'm going to go to Filter, Noise, Dust and Scratches. Now the way this works, I'm going to set this all the way down as low as it'll go. Radius. What you want to do is turn the radius up until those dots disappear, which they almost disappeared just on one pixel. I'm going to turn it up to two pixels, and now they're totally gone. Now the problem is, is everything went just a little fuzzy. So then we come down here to the threshold, and you start turning that up. And I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse um, to just gradually increase that threshold. And what you're looking for are the speckles to start returning. And as soon as you see them coming back, then you back back off. Now what I, I didn't see speckles here, but I see his eyes started being a little speckled. So I'm going to back off. Looks like about 15 probably be good. 
Okay. And then um, I see a little smudge here on his cheek. So I'm going to use the spot healing brush. Just get rid of that. There's a little something going on there. And uh, I'm just holding down the space bar and I get this little hand to move the picture around. Just looking for any other little, I don't think there's too much damage on this photo. It might be just a little bit right there. Yeah. Okay. And now, let me get that little spot right there. Now I am ready to begin colorizing. Now I know that there's still some speckling going on here and I'm going to fix that later on in um, while I'm working. There's this blown out highlight and I'm going to work on that later. But first I want to get some color in here. So when you're colorizing with uh, soft light layers, you should begin a new layer for every new color. And sometimes even if you're using the same color, if you're doing a different area, you want a new layer. And that way each thing can be adjusted uh, separately from the others. So I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light. And then I keep swatches open in another tab. And I'm going to pick this flesh color. This is my favorite color to start with. I always use that one. I have good luck with it, so I don't want to change. And uh, my brush, I make it as large as I comfortably can and I turn the hardness all the way to zero. And I do that so I don't have any harsh edges of my coloring. I want it to overlap a little bit, which I may have overlapped that a little much, but that's okay. I'll back it out with the eraser. So I go over everything, including his eyes. The reason I do this, a couple reasons, it's faster for me to just do it with a big brush instead of a little tiny brush and getting all detailed. Um, but I'm also more likely not to miss anything. Now if I want to check that I didn't miss anything, I can turn this back to normal and I can see a spot right there that I missed and there's a little bit there. And then I can change it back to soft light. Okay, now I don't want this flesh color to be that far into his hair, so I'm going to erase that. And I don't want to color his eyeball. So I'm going to erase that. Now it's fine to use the eraser on this, it's non destructive. It's just a color layer. There's nothing else on this layer except this color. So if you erase too much, it's easy. You just get the brush and put a little back. So there's no need to make a mask or anything with color layers in, in this way, when you're colorizing in this way. Now there's other methods where you would want a mask, but not for this. This is uh, freehand coloring. Here I erased a little too much, turned my brush down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Now I feel like that is fully colored. So now I'm going to make a new layer, change it to soft light. And for my second skin, second layer of skin, what I normally do is go darker. So that's down. And to the right, more saturated. And I'm not too choosy. I just pick a what I think looks like a decent brown color. I don't worry too much about what color it is. I just want it to be based on the first color that I laid down. Now this, it's on a new layer. And I'm just going to go over the entire face with this color again. Now soft light layers kind of cling to the darker areas. That's what soft light does. 
And so if I turn the opacity down, it's going to remove it from these lighter areas and just stick to those shadowed areas. So this is my shadowing layer, my shading, my first shading layer because there will be another one. Okay, now that's without, and that's with it. It does change the color um, of your base coat, but it also adds depth to your photo. Okay, uh, new layer, set it to soft light. Now, typically, I just use red. Um, you can use you know, a, a, you can play around with what color you like. I usually just use bright red, but I'll turn this and this one down a little bit. Um, and I add a little red in the cheeks. Let me erase this where I went over. And then I'm going to turn that way down almost to nothing. That's 11 almost to nothing, but I do feel people look better with a little bit of red in their face. Okay, a new layer, changes to soft light, and I'm going to go back over here to my swatches. And I borrowed this color from another artist who uh, uses this to shade in a beard. And I'm going to do that with this fellow because he looks to me like he may have a little bit of five o'clock shadow here. So I'm going to add some shading in a bluish tone. And I think I might have gone a little high with that. Let me back that down. Okay. And then I'm also going to turn that way down. I only really want it to affect those darker areas. I don't want it to really look blue. I want it more to look kind of a grayish color. And I'm sorry if you can hear my furnace just kicked in. It's very loud. Okay. Now one thing I failed to do down here on the uh, base coat of the skin um, because of the color of his hair and eyebrows I really don't want that to be colored with the skin color. I'm going to come back and color those the same as his hair. Now if you have the brush as the active tool you can click Alt on your keyboard and you can use the color picker to, with your left mouse button to choose a color. I'm going to turn the size down here and just kind of fill in a little bit around these brows. Looks like he may have a scar in that eyebrow. Okay. All right, back to the top. Uh, okay, now lips. New layer. Okay, soft light. And I don't know what just happened. I just had to, oh, I shut that off accidentally. Okay, and I'm going to use the bright red that's in the color swatches here. And uh, I'm just going to go over his lips with this red. And then I'm going to turn that way down, right around four, five six, about six. Just to give a tiny bit of a tint to his lips. Six might be too much. I'm going to take three. Turn it down to three. Yeah. Now every photo is different. You just have to kind of look at it. Three is not always the right number. Um, depends on the base photo. Okay, for his eyes. Now the eyes are 
fairly big in this photo and fairly clear. I'm not sure what color they are. Uh, they could be brown or they could be blue. Uh, I think I'm going to go for brown. So normally I will take something like this orange color here and a small brush and I'm going to go over just not going all the way to the edge I'm just going kind of on this inner portion of the iris. I'm also try to keep that color out of that highlight and erase that And then I'm going to turn that down. And then I'll do a new layer. So it's a soft light. And I'm just going to pick this brown right here. And then I'm going to go over that. Plus, I'm going to get that area that I skipped the first time around. And I'll go over those white highlights and just go right over them. Okay. Now I need to adjust the opacity. So I'm going to turn that down a little bit. And then up on the brown layer, turn that down just a little bit. And using two colors gives it some depth. If I shut this orange off, it's just a flat looking dull brown. But when I bring that orange in there, it creates depth that gives that reflection of light um, like your eyes would have. Now I'm going to do a new layer, so soft light, and I'm going to use black to just darken that pupil. One of the only times I use black black is on pupils. New layer, soft light. And my mouse gives me fits. Sometimes I accidentally shut things off. I don't mean to. Okay. I'm going to just hit that highlight there. That one there. And that one there. And that's just plain white. New layer. Soft light. Um, some people would not use blue in the eyes. Um, I do. I just want to, th th that shadow is gray, I don't want it to be gray, I want it to give it a little color. So I'll hit that with this bright blue and then turn that way down. All I'm trying to do is have that shadow not be gray. I don't want it to be a black and white gray photo. I just want to give it a little color. All right, you could use a reddish or pinkish um, but any time white is involved, I tend to use blue for my shadow. That's just an artistic choice. You, you can do it however you want. And then uh, we can see the tear ducts. So new layer, soft light. And I'm going to get me a bright pink color. And I'm going to go over the tear ducts. And I might touch on this waterline just a little bit with the pink can't see the entire waterline, so I'm just going to hit it in a couple spots there and then turn that down to almost nothing. And it just highlights those tear ducts and water lines just a tiny bit. And small details like that, while they may not stand out, which you don't want them to, but they do make a difference in your results. Now I want to add a little bit of shading, a little bit more shading in his face. To give it some depth. So new layer, set to soft light. And I'm just going to use this uh, cool brown. And a bigger brush. Now shading goes places where anything that's further away from you is going to have a shadow. Anything that projects, like the tip of the nose, will be brighter than the base underneath the nose. Um, 
the eye socket. I'm not going to color this. I think it's a little dark as it is um, underneath the bottom lip, uh, underneath the neck here, under the chin and the neck is usually shaded. Mm. Come on now. Maybe right here inside the ear. It's a little bit shaded. And then I'm going to turn that down. It's about 50%. Okay. I'm going to do hair, new layer, soft light. You get tired of hearing me say that, but every color change gets a new layer. And I'm going to use this dark auburn color. I need to find some more color swatches for hair. That's the only one I have that I like. But I need a little bit more variety. Now again, with just as large of a brush as you can use for the area, just go over his hair. Get that color. And I overlap onto the skin just slightly. Not much. I'm going to get a new layer, set to soft light, and I'm going to go back to that cool brown just to add some shadows. And like I said, soft light will cling to the darker areas. and kind of skip over the highlighted areas so that soft light is really great for colorizing. Oh, and I failed to do, I, I'm determined to forget his eyebrows. Let's do his eyebrows. I'm going to go back to that color and use my color picker. And this is going to be a little bit too much on his eyebrows, so I'm going to get, um, I'm going to go back to that darker color, get my eraser, turn the eraser down to, uh, what is that, 25%, and just kind of lighten that a little bit, because his eyebrows, I want to be able to see the individual hairs a little bit. I want them to be big old caterpillars on his face. Kind of lighten that up a little bit. Okay, suit jacket. Just going to pick um, maybe one of these blues over here for his suit. Bigger brush. You get impatient with the small brush. I got it on his face a little bit. Uh, turn the opacity back up to 100 on that eraser. I try to remember to do that after I use it, but I forget. And then I wind up wondering why the uh, tool isn't working. It's because I've got the opacity turned way down. Okay, uh, new layer, soft light. And I know this video is getting very long, but I'm trying to show you it more in depth um, of how I colorize things. I, I've shown you just little snippets here and there. Uh, but I'm trying to be a little more detailed and show you the entire process. I'm going to get lazy here on this tie just because I'm trying to speed up a little bit. And I'm not happy with what I did here. Get that color back. I miss some here. And you do want to zoom in and make sure you've got your edges clean. Um, you don't want bleed over. 
just it really shows. Okay. And that might be a little bright, so maybe I'll turn the opacity down on that tie. Now, sometimes, not always, but sometimes for a white shirt, I'll do the same thing I did for his eyes. I'll use uh, blue, and it's a really bright, it's um, uh, RGB blue. It's a really bright, purplish-looking blue. And I'm going to put this on these shadows. And remember, because it's soft light, this color will cling to the shadows. And I know I'm being sloppy here. Erase that a little. I don't like my shadows to be gray. I want them to have some color. And they do reflect the world around them. So I could have used the blue from his suit jacket, maybe. Um. There we go. And then we'll turn the opacity on that way down. And I, I just want there to be a hint of color. And then I'm not going to do it, but sometimes I'll go back over this with white and brighten these highlights. But I think they look pretty good as they are. So I'm going to leave that as is. Um, okay. I think that's looking pretty good. Now I haven't colored the background and I'm just going to pick something real quick here and that's my Facebook beeping at me. Excuse the excuse me for having that open in the background. Yeah, I'm just going to color this. Come on, mouse. It's a very light color. It's not showing up very well. But it is there. I don't like to leave anything uncolored. To me, it just stands out as black and white. Even if um, you're going to be making like someone's shoes black, I still want to see them colorized black. Not just left black, because it's really not I mean, you can really tell that you didn't color it. So I don't want to leave anything undone. Okay. That might be a little close to the same color as his splash. Let me turn the opacity down a little bit just to make him pop out a little. And um, I might have chosen a better color for that, but that's, I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, now I think I'm done colorizing. I'm pretty sure I haven't missed anything. Um, if I did, I can always go back and fill it in later. Uh, so I am going to create a stamp visible, which is Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Hold down all of those keys at the same time, and now you have what it has done is taking every visible layer below and combine them, merge them, into a new layer. And now is where I'm going to begin fixing some of these problem areas. So I'm going to rename this layer color. And then I am going to duplicate this layer and rename this details. Now this is um, called frequency separation. I'm going to shut details off for the moment. I'm going to go to the color layer that I created. And I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And what I want to do is blur this to the point that some of this, some of these freckles, this blotchiness goes away. And don't worry about the details of anything else because that's what this layer is going to take care of. Now what I'm doing is this is going to be my color layer. And this will be my details layer. Now we will go to 
uh, layer, I'm sorry, image, apply image. This is the details layer. So I am going to use the uh, color layer and my blend mode is going to be subtract. Scale is 2, offset is 128. Click OK. Now this layer has no color, it just has the details. And we will change this to linear light. Now if I take the two of these and just hit shift and selected the second one, put them in a group, group from layers. Now when I shut this off, as you can see, nothing changes. It's because these two layers put together is the same as everything that's below. Okay. Now on my color layer, this is where I'm going to make my adjustments. This blotchiness right here, I want to smooth that out. So I'm going to use the lasso tool and I'm going to select this area and I want the feather to be at 20 pixels. I don't want a harsh edge. I want it to feather out. Then I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And then I'm going to turn this up and I'm watching what it does to the picture. And I just I don't want it to go gray. I just want it to decrease that blotchiness. Okay. Now I've got uh, this under the eye. This is kind of an odd discoloration. And I'm going to do the same that for that. Now I'm going to go to blur, Gaussian blur every time because I want to be able to change this ratio here. Because each area of the face is going to be a little different. Okay? So let me go, that's before and that's after. Before, after. I just want to smooth that stuff out. Okay. Choose this on his temple. The filter, blur, casting blur. Just blur that out. And right here. Almost looks like he has a unibrow. whole area right here and blur that. And here on his chin where it's blown out. See, I don't want to go too high because it starts turning gray. Okay. You got some odd blotchiness here. Maybe a little bit right here. Now all you're doing is just blurring the colors a little bit. You're not losing the texture, which is that detail, the detail layer. Now if I want to see these sort of looks like scratches right here, I can go to that detail layer and um, get my patch tool. And I can smooth that out a little bit. Do that 
here and there. Ooh, that's too much. Okay. If I'm unhappy with the patch tool, I can use healing brush. I can choose an area where I like the texture. And just pop that in there. Kind of smooths that out a little bit. Okay. All right. Let me put all this other stuff in a group together. So here was the original, and here is the after. Now this could stand maybe a little bit more um, adjustment. And if I want to, I can go to the group, the very top here, click on the group, and hit Control, Alt, Shift, and E, and make a new stamp visible. And then I can use something like um, the Nick collection. And um, let's put it on manual. You have to choose an area that is fairly flat. Okay, not too shabby. If that effect is too much, you can turn the opacity down a little bit. You don't have to accept it at 100%. Um, and if we want to, let's make a new stamp visible, Control Alt Shift and E. And let's play a little bit with his hair. You may not want to do this. I'm just trying to show you some different things that you can do. So this highlighted portion of his hair, I'm going to select that. And probably should have that set to zero. Let me do that again. Let me select this with the feather set to zero. And then I'm going to go to filter. Blur Average. Now that is the average color of his hair. And I'm going to use the color picker to choose that color. And then I am going to delete that layer that I created because that was just to get that color. That's the only reason. Now for this, I am going to make the color um, more saturated and brighter. So I'm going to go to the right and up a little bit. Okay, and get my brush, get a new layer, change it to soft light, get a fairly fluffy big brush, and I'm just going to brush this over those lighter areas of his hair where I think the light might be coming through. If I go overboard, I can always erase it. Okay, and then double click on the layer. And right down here, it says blend if. I'm going to move this bottom slider over until that color is only on the highlighted, the very brightest areas. And then I'm going to click, hold down the Alt key and click that to separate it. And I'm going to refine that further by moving half the slider over. 
and click OK. Now if I shut that off and back on, so it just added some color to those highlights and um, brought those lights in. I can do the same with um, shadows. Get a new layer, soft light. I'm just going to pick that color for the shadows. I'm going to come in here and color it in where these darker areas are. I don't want to go overboard. Double click. This time I want it on the dark end, so I'm going to go to the light end and drag that over. And then I'm going to hold down Alt and split that. And now it's just strictly in the very, very darkest areas of his hair. I'm going to turn that back on. Off and back on. So, um, there you go. I see maybe a little bit more fiddling I could do with the texture. Um, but um, I know it's a long involved video, but I wanted to actually get into more details um, compared to some of my previous videos. I, I, I went really maybe a little fast and uh, did not complete an entire picture and show you what I actually do. Um, so if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask. And uh, if I don't know the answer, I'll search it out. I'll find someone who does and we'll find out, uh, you know, what, what questions you have. We'll find out answers for you. Um, thank you for watching and uh, I hope this is helpful.